Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this um, hermit crab design, which was designed by me. And I absolutely love this design. I feel like this is such a kind of weird design. I feel like you guys always ask for simple, such simple designs. Like you're like, hey Ginger, you should make a cat. And then I, I come out of nowhere like, what about a hermit crab? Like, I don't know. I feel like I end up making these weird designs, but um... I thought I would share this one with you guys because it's still summer. I am holding on to the last of my summer and um, this feels like a summery design, but yeah. It is August right now when I'm filming this, so summer's ending, but I'm like, no, it's still summer. It's not fall yet, so yeah. But I absolutely love this design. I think it turned out really fun. Hermit crabs are also just such a weird animal and I don't know, I just, I kind of love this guy. So yeah, here's the design. He's got a little shell that you can see. And that's just kind of the crab. And, um, yeah. Here's another one. I made two. Um, it's the same thing. Hermit crab. I think I didn't put this guy's eyes close enough together, but it's the same guy. So, um, yeah. So, I think that's pretty much it. Um, difficulty-wise, I feel like this design isn't super difficult, but it's not super easy either. I feel like... It's kind of in the middle. It's not a hard design, that's for sure. This design is also fairly simple to make. I don't think that, like, it's fairly quick to make, not simple. Um, I don't think this is going to be a long tutorial, but there is a lot of things going on with this design, if that makes sense, because we kind of do some stuff to make, like, the, the layers go from, like, out to in to out to in, and then we do have to... So we, we make this bit first and then we attach this guy onto the shell and I feel like sometimes when you have to attach things it gets a little complicated if you're a beginner so I don't think this is a hard design I'm gonna do my best to go slow and explain but it's definitely not an easier design if that makes sense do with that information what you will um but yeah I I, I love these guys and if you're deciding to make a crab I'm excited because I would love to see them if you make them show them to me but um, as always, the pattern and everything will be in the description, so we have pattern, band count, all that's down there in the description. Um, I don't have the band count right now, I have no idea what the band count is, but I guess I'll guess. I ha if, if I had to guess how many bands this takes, I would say maybe like 170, so. It's not super band heavy. Uh, but I think that's all I have to say about this design. I love it, I think you should make a hermit crab, and um, yeah, we'll get started. So, of course, you're going to need some color some bands for your crab. Um, the colors I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be using three different colors for the shell. And I'm picking them up right now. Ooh. So I'm going to be using um, Mango, Persian, Purple, I think, and then Sunkiss Persian for the shell. I'm just going to be using these just because I want the shell to be multicolored. Um... And then for the crab today, I think we're going to have a blue crab, so he's going to be like a blue hermit crab. Um, of course, you're going to need a hook. I'm going to be using my double-ended hook today. You do not need a double-ended hook. You're only going to need one one end, so you can use a regular hook, like a regular rainbow hook, a crochet hook, whatever you want to use, but just whatever hook. Um, you're also going to need a C-clip to mark your rows with, or an S-clip. I always get comments that are like, can I use an S-clip? Yeah, you just need something to mark where you start and end, so that can be anything. Um, you're also going to want some eyes, and um, I used 4mm pony beads for these guys' eyes, so these are 4mm pony beads. If you don't know, I'm in college right now, and I just realized when I got home, I'm filming this in my home, like not at university. And I realized I left my eye beads at university, so I have these bigger eyes that I'm going to show you how to do the eyes with. But I'm also going to show you how to do the eyes with bands, because I kind of forgot my 4mm pony beads at home. Well, not at home, at school, in my apartment at school. I swear, I, my, all my supplies are everywhere right now. It's been such a pain to like keep track of where everything is, but I will show you how to do the eyes. Um, but yeah, these are four millimeter pony beads. So I think that's pretty much it. We're going to get started. Um, like I said, we get started with the shell, so we're going to make the shell first, and then afterwards we'll do this portion. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to pick up my colors for the, for the shell. I'm going to try to do like a multicolored shell, so I'm just going to use diff three different colors. I'm just going to put them in order on my finger. I just want to see how it looks. I did two different colors with this guy. But... Yeah. Also, as always, the pattern is in the description. If you need to... If you... If you want the pattern. I, I don't know. It's been a while since I filmed a tutorial, so... Every time after I come back after not filming one for a while, I'm like, did I say everything I need to say? 
So, yeah. Also, just a quick note, because I know I'm going to get questions of why I have a band-aid on my pinky. Um, my... If you haven't seen, I think I just that on Instagram and stuff. I injured my pinky nail. It, like, I got a splinter under the nail and they had to take it out. And my nail still doesn't look the best. So I'm just covering it up. It's not even injured anymore. I just was like, I don't know if everyone needs to see that. So I covered it up. Anyways, we're going to get started. So we are going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So... One... Two... And three... And then we're going to be putting five stitches into this cap band. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you right now. But we're going to take a band, pull it through everything on your hook, both ends back on your hook, push the back one over the front one. Then we're going to go back into the cap band and make sure you go through all three loops. You're going to pull a band through just the cap band, so not this last loop. Put both ends back on your hook. We're gonna push the back. <laughs> we're gonna push the back loop over the front loop, and then we're gonna push this one from last time over as well. So we're gonna repeat that 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 exact thing we just did um, three more times. So we have five stitches in total in this cap band. We have two right now, and because I'm using two different colors, it's really easy to see that we have two. But we're just gonna go back into the cap band. We're going to pull a band through just the cap band, put both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. So that's the third stitch. We have to do two more. So we'll go through the cap band, pull a band through, both ends back on our hook, back one over the front one, loop from last time. Need to do one more. So once you're pretty sure you have five loops, you're going to want to count to make sure. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So instead of going into the cap band, we're going to go into this first loop here. And we're going to pull a band through just that loop. Put both ends back on our hook. Push the back one over the front one. And then push the loop from last time over as well. And then this is the one we'll be putting our C-clip on. So that's the first step. I also desperately need to drink water. I always hate that my camera doesn't have a pause button. Because like, I remember when I used to film on my phone, I could always pause for water breaks. But with my camera, I cannot. And I, I never really go back and edit my tutorials. I mean, I could come back and be like, oh, where exactly did I drink water? But it would just take me so much more time and I don't think you guys care that much if I pause for a second, so. Anyways. So that was the first bit, um, we're going to be starting our next row, so our next row is going to be increasing everything, and what that basically means is that every single stitch we do is going to be an increase, and I'm going to show you what an increase is right now. So this first stitch already has one loop in it, so this would technically be a single stitch, but we're increasing everything, so it needs to be an increase, and all an increase is, is you basically just do two stitches um, in the same loop. So we're going to go back in and do another stitch. Like that. So that would be an increase. Um, this first one's a little weird, so I'll show you again in case you're still confused. So we're going to move on to the next loop. We're going to go ahead and make one stitch. We're going to go back in to the same loop. Make another stitch. And that's an increase. So we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. So we're going to just be increasing everything until we get to the C-clip. So, once again, on the next stitch, we just put two stitches in the same loop. Like that. And we just keep doing that. This is unrelated, but while I pick up bands. I'm thinking of doing a video telling you guys my favorite, like, band types, because I realized oh, there are some just colors of bands that I just love, and Sunkiss Persian is one of them. Like, I feel like when you see it in the, like, Rainbow Loom web store, you're like, oh, I don't know if I like that color. 
But if you ever have an opportunity, like, if, if you're ordering, you should order some Sun's Kiss Persian because it's like, it's one of my favorite colors of bands. It's this, like, metallic-y yellow here. Like, I just love it so much. I don't know, I was thinking, I was like, Ugh. such an underrated color, I feel. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, random thoughts. We're gonna keep increasing. So we're just increasing until we get to the C-clip. Pretty much just doing two stitches in each loop. Because that's what increasing is. And also, I do know I loom a little fast, so just remember you can pause at any point. If I get a little bit ahead of you, it's fine. Um, but once we get to the one that has a C-clip on it, we're going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it, and then we're going to move our C-clip up. So we're going to take the C-clip off of the band it's on, and we're going to move it up onto the band that is on our hook. Like that. So that's it for that row. Um, for the next row, we're going to be increasing every other. And what this means is we're going to alternate between doing a single stitch and then an increase. And then a single stitch and then an increase. We're basically alternating um, until we get to the C-clip. So this first one here, the one with the C-clip, is going to be our single stitch. So the next one will be an increase. So once again, we'll put two stitches in this loop. And then because we just did an increase, the next one's going to be a single stitch, so we'll just put one stitch in this loop. And then the next one's an increase. So like I said, we're just alternating between single stitches and increase. So this was an increase, next one's a single stitch. Oh my god, I just realized we forgot to count for the last row. Um, we'll count at the end of this row, but if you... If you wanted to count how many loops you had at the end of last row, it should have been 10. I always have the amount of loops you should have at the end of each row in the pattern. Um, but yeah, I forgot to count. Um, it's fine, we'll count at the end of this row, but yeah, I'm sorry about that. Like I said, whenever I haven't filmed a tutorial for a while and then I come back, I, I feel like I do like remember what I'm supposed to- I don't know, it's all- it's very weird, but I always forget something, so. Hopefully that's the something I forget for this tutorial and then we'll be fine. But um, yeah, if ever in a tutorial I forget to tell you how many loops are at the end of a row, you can always check down in the description and the little number in parentheses is the number of loops you should have. So yeah, sorry about that, but I kind of don't want to <laughs> undo everything. So we'll just count at the end of this row. Anyways, we just did a single stitch, so the next one's an increase. I'm kind of really loving the colors I chose for this shell. Single stitch. And an increase. And a single stitch. And then an increase. Oops. And then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we're going to move it up. So, we're going to count at the end of this row. I'm sorry for our last time. But we should be at 15 loops now, so if we count, we should have 15. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Like that. Hopefully you're at 15 loops. Um, you should be. But now we're going to do three rows normal. So we're just going to do three rows of single stitches. At the end of each of these rows, we should still be at um, six, 16, 15 loops. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I'm going to stay on and do all three rows with you. And then I'll show you what to do next. I think this is probably the most repetitive portion of this design. Usually all the rows are very different, but this is like the one repetitive <laughs> repetitive bit, but it's okay. So like I said, we're just going to do three rows of single stitches, so this will be our first one. And all we're doing is we're just doing one stitch in every loop all the way around, basically. That's what a single stitch is. But yeah, so we're just doing three rows normal, so three rows of single stitches. And I know I already said this, but I'm going to repeat myself one more time. We should be at 15 rows, 15 loops at the end of each row. But yeah. So 
So since we're doing single stitches, I'm gonna talk. I keep getting a lot of comments lately that's like, ugh, you should not be talking, you should be explaining, but this part's repetitive, so I'm talking. Um, but yeah, I did make this design because me and my family were headed to the beach and I was like, oh my god, I need some loom thing to take photos of at the beach, it'd be so fun. And I tried to make a couple different things, but then I got an idea to make a hermit crab and I was like, wait, that would be so cute. And I did it and I swear, sometimes designs, because I feel like sometimes with designs, it's like years of struggle until I get it right. Um, but a few of them, like I'll try it like the first time and it comes out like almost perfect and I'm like, oh my god. And I feel like the hermit crab, this hermit crab was one of them, like I just did it and it was like exactly how I wanted it. Well, I mean, I did have a couple different tries on the shell and it took me like a while to get it, but it wasn't like... I feel like there's some designs that I've been trying to make for years that are like, I just can't get it right. But this was like, in a couple tries I got it right. And then I was able to take photos at the beach, which I'm going to post on Instagram tomorrow. And I'm so excited to share them. Anyways, we've made it to the C-clip, so we're going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. So that was our first row of single stitches. Like I said, we have to do three. Um, I'm not going to count now. I'm going to count at the end of the three rows. So we're going to go ahead and do two more, and then I'll count to make sure I have 15. But we're just going to keep going with our single stitches. But yeah, I had a lot of fun at the beach. Um, me and my family went to the beach when we, when they came to drop me off at summer school. Because if you notice, there was like a gap in tutorials for a month. Um, if you're watching this around the time when I post this video. It's because I took two summer classes this summer. I took painting in Spanish, but that's not important. The important thing is we went to the beach and it was so much fun. I hadn't been to a beach since I was like 10 maybe, and I'm like 22 now, so it had been a minute and I had so much fun at the beach. I didn't think we were going to have that much fun at the beach, but like my mom's already asking, like she's telling us like, when are we going to go back? That was so much fun. And like no one in my family can swim either, except for my dad. We just don't know how to swim, but we were just kind of like on the edge, just walking around like getting seashells and standing like only up to like our ankles or whatever in the water. It was fun though. And my mom actually found a whole sand dollar at the beach which was cool. And we found a lot of sand dollar pieces too. So, yeah. I had I was not expecting to have so much fun at the beach, but it was it was a good day. <laughs> um yeah, it was also interesting cuz for some odd reason there was a load of jellyfish at the beach. Like like we'd be standing on the edges and then you'd just see like a jellyfish wash past you. And it wasn't like a super poisonous jellyfish or anything, but like there was jellyfishes, which was interesting. Like, I don't know. A couple people did get stung by them while we were there, so it was possible to get stung, but luckily we didn't, and we were kind of avoiding them a little bit. Okay, so that's the second row of single stitches. We have one more to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and really quickly do the last row. But yeah, apparently they normally don't have jellyfish, is is jellyfish issues at that beach, but for some reason when we went, supposedly it was a thing that was happening, that there was just jellyfish. Which was kind of cool, because like, jellyfish looks so weird in real life. There was also, well it was kind of sad, because there was one like washed up on the sand, so it obviously was not very alive, but... I don't know, it was so, it was kind of interesting to see a jellyfish. But also scary if you're like standing and then all of a sudden a wave comes in and oop, there's a jellyfish in it. But... Yeah, I totally want to go to the, back to the beach. I was telling my mom when they... Because, like, where I go to school, it's, it's like an hour away from... Like, two hours away from the beach. And... It's actually, like, three hours away. But... They are probably going to come pick me up in the spring. And I'm like... We should go to the beach then. Because I'm flying home in December for break. So, they won't be heading up that way to get me. And I'm like... Yeah, so we're already making plans for our next beach trip, beach trip is what I'm saying. Because it was so much fun. It was also fun because I took, uh, I took this guy to take photos of at the beach and I also had another, where did I put him? Oh, he's all the way up there, I'm not gonna get him. But I had another loom thing that I was taking photos of at the beach too. I've been, see, okay. You know how I said, like, some designs, it's like a couple tries, and then it's like, oh, it looks great. I've been trying to make a whale shark probably for a solid year now, like, off and on, just being like, uh, like, come, I, like, I take a break from the design, I come back to it, 
and it's just not working out for some reason. Like I can't, I, I don't know what it is with the whale shark design, but I keep trying to make a whale shark. And I tried a different way to make a whale shark this time. And I did take photos of it at the beach, but it's still not how I want it. And I'm like, oh, so I don't know why, but whale sharks are such a weird shape and I still can't get it right. Anyways, that is our third and final row of single stitches. So your um, shell should be looking a little something like this. Okay. I do love these colors I chose for the shell. Like they're so nice. Unrelated, just appreciating my color choices. I, I spent like 10 minutes before I did this tutorial like, what color should I make the shell? Um, I was being picky, but it's fine. Anyways, if we count around now, we should be at 15 loops. So we'll count the one on our hooks. We should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So yeah, so we're gonna move on to the next step. Um, but yeah, this row we're decreasing every other, so what that basically means is it's kind of like the increasing every other row we did where we were alternating between, do between doing a single stitch and, a, and a decrease and an increase. This time we're going to be alternating between doing a single stitch and a decrease. So I'll show you what I mean by that. But basically, this first one we did again is going to count as our single stitch, so the next one will be our decrease. And all a decrease is, is you're going to grab the inside part of one loop, the back part of the next loop, and make a stitch like that so I'll show you again but first because we're doing we're decreasing every other the next one's gonna be our single stitch so this one will be a single stitch and then the next one will be our decrease and once again what a decrease is is you're gonna grab the inside part of one loop back part of the next loop and then you make a stitch like that and then we're gonna do a single stitch because we're alternating, like I said. Next one's a decrease again, so inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. Then we'll do a single stitch, then a decrease, then a single stitch. So yeah, we were just alternating between doing single stitches and decreases. And now I'm pretty much at the C-clip. So once again, once we get to the C-clip, we're going to make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And move it up. Like that. So after that row, we should be at 10 loops. So if you count around, you should have 10. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like that. So... What we're going to do next is we are going to be doing a single stitch. We're going to do technically, okay. I'm going to take this one row at a time, but we're going to do a row of single stitches. So we're doing one row normal, but it's also technically what I like to call a half row. So we're only going to be grabbing the outer half of each loop. So normally when we do a single stitch, we go through the whole loop. This time we're only going to go through the outer half. So we're only going through this bit. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. I'm just going to pick up some bands real quick. You know, I hope I'm not going to have to play musical batteries this, this tutorial because I, I, like, today is one of the few days I have time to film a tutorial and I was like, oh, I'll do the Hermitcraft tutorial. I completely forgot to charge all my camera batteries last night. So I had them charging this morning and this one I think is fully charged. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hoping, praying my camera batteries last me and I'm not having to constantly switch them out because that's going to be annoying. Hopefully. Also, my camera's being wobbly. Why are you doing that? Um, stop. Okay, we should be good now. Uh, what color is next? <laughs> what color did we use last? That's a good question. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean. So like I said, it's a row of single stitches, but we're only grabbing the outer half of each loop. Also, I'm going to undo this first one, just because it looks nicer when you do it on every single stitch for the row, and I went through the whole one on this first stitch. So I'm going to undo that first stitch we did with a C-clip on it. And I'm only going to go through the outer half of this loop and then redo the stitch. It just looks nicer when you have it since the one with a C-clip. But yeah, we're just going to do single stitches all the way around. It's just we're only grabbing the outer half of each loop. Trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So like I said, all we're doing is instead of going through the full loop, 
we're only grabbing that outer portion. And what I consider the outside is technically the one that's facing not in towards the creation, but towards the outside, which I don't know how else to explain it, but that's what we're doing. We're just going to do this all the way around until we get to the C clip. Oop. I accidentally let go of my oops. And then once we get to the C clip, we'll make a stitch on the one that has a C clip on it and move it up. And also on the one with the C clip, you're not going to go through only the outer half. You're going to go through the whole thing on the one with the C clip. And then we move it up. So we should still be at 10 loops. So if we count around, we should still have 10. We should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Like that. So we're going to do another row of single stitches, so another row normal, just single stitches. And at the end of this row we should still be at 10 loops. Um, we're going through the whole loop again, so we're not only going through half. And, uh, yeah. I'm just picking up a few more bands before we do this row. But yeah, we're just going to do a row of single stitches. And once again, we're going through the whole stitch, not just half. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm reading my pattern, I'm like, what are we doing next? Might need to consult my pattern as I am a little confused. Oh, okay, I got away a little ahead. Okay, I know where we are. But once again, we're gonna make a stitch on the one that has a C loop on it and move it up. And we should still be at 10 loops, so we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Did I count that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I did. So now would be a good time to stuff it a bit if you have stuffing. I'm just realizing just now I forgot to grab stuffing. So I'm going to go grab some stuffing real quick. Okay, we got stuffing. So we're just going to want to stuff this bottom portion right now because it starts to get smaller. And every time I forget to stuff it till the end, it's just, it's such a pain to stuff the bottom portion later. So right now is a good time to add stuffing to the bottom portion. Um, I like to just tear up some cotton balls and stick them in. But you can use polyfill or whatever you have. It's also funny because I ran into my family when I ran out to get cotton balls and they're like, you always forget the cotton balls in your tutorials. And I'm like, I know, I never remember the stuffing. I also always forget to say the stuffing in the intro. Like, yeah, you need stuffing. I always forget to say it, like, without fail. I just always forget that my, my loom creations need to be stuffed. A little bit. Don't want to overstuff him. There we go. So I didn't add any stuffing as you can see to like this top portion yet. I just put it in the bottom portion just because stuffing this later is such a pain. I don't want to do it. Anyways. So. For the next row. We are going to decrease every other again, so it's the same thing we did before. We're going to be alternating between doing a single stitch, and then a decrease, and then a single stitch, and then a decrease. So we're just alternating between doing single stitches and decreases, and we're going to do that all the way around. So once again, this first one is going to count as our single stitch, so the next one's going to be our decrease. So we grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. And we'll make a stitch. And then the next one's a single stitch. And then this one's a decrease, so inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop. 
then we do a single stitch, then we do a decrease, uh, there we go, and then we're going to do a single stitch. And then the one with the C-clip on it is technically supposed to be a decrease, but we're going to go ahead and just do a single stitch on this one. So on the one with the C-clip, we're going to go ahead and just do a single stitch. But the next row is going to be a half row again, so we're only going to go through the, like, the outer half of this loop. And then make a stitch. And we'll move our C-clip up. So if we count around now, we should be at seven loops, so we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like that. And like I said, the next row we are doing is going to be another one of those like half rows where we're only grabbing the outer half. So the one with the C-clip on it should be on the only like, only on the outer half part of this band. So I'm going to pick up some more bands real quick. And then I'll explain things. It definitely does take me longer to pick up bands and tutorials where I do like multiple colors, but it is worth it. I wanted to give this guy a really pretty shell. I also feel like whenever I'm designing, I'm like afraid to use some of my like nicer bands, I guess. So I wanted to use some of my fancier bands. Also because I don't have all of my bands at school with me, so like it's kind of nice that I'm home right now and like have my whole band collection to use. So I'm taking advantage of it. But anyways, we are going to be doing a another one of those like half rows. So we're going to do a row of single stitches, but we're only going to be grabbing the outer half of each loop. So on this first one, we already did it, so we're going to move on to the next stitch. And once again, we're just doing single stitches, only grabbing the outer half. Wait, did we count? Do we count for this row? I don't remember. Okay, we're going to count again in case I forgot, but we should be at seven loops. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we'll continue. <laughs> but we're only going to be grabbing the outer half of each loop. And we're just going to do a row of single stitches all the way around. And we're only going through the outer half. And I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. We're getting to the point in this design where everything starts to get a little tight. So it's kind of hard for me to really show you what I'm doing because I'm trying my best to keep my fingers out of the way, but also it's just tiny. And once again, once you get to the C-clip, we're going to go ahead and just do a single stitch on the one that has the C-clip on it and move it up. And we should still be at seven loops, so if you can't, you should have seven. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right now is a good time to stuff this second portion. So we're going to go ahead and we can take our hook out and let the C-clip hold it, and we're going to stuff that second portion. This is kind of an interesting design because you do have to kind of stuff as you go. It just gets so long, and it's so hard to stuff tall things. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and add some stuffing right now. Your little thing also should be looking like something like this, so it should have the, this kind of indent right here. You can kind of see that. But we're almost done with the shell, surprisingly. I think you guys could tell that we're on like the last little shell bump we make. Okay. okay, so we're going to go ahead and do another row of single stitches, but this time, once again, we're going through the full loop, not the half of a, not like half a loop. We're going through the full thing. So we're just doing one row normal of single stitches around this.
Need more pants. And then once we get to the one with the sequel on it, we're going to make a stitch. And move it up. So now's a good time to stuff this very last portion. So just put a little bit of stuffing in the end here. And then we are going to be ready to close up. So we're just stuffing the end bit. Okay. So now we're going to be decreasing every, uh, I, I don't remember. Okay, I don't remember if we counted at the end of the last row, but we should still be at seven loops. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for the next row, we are going to be Decreasing every other again, so it's the same thing. We're going to alternate between doing a single stitch and a decrease all the way around until we get to the C-clip. So once again, this first one here is going to be our... Hold up. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. There we go. So once again, this first one here is going to be our single stitch, so the next one will go ahead and be our decrease. And it is getting really hard to decrease and stuff here because we are getting so small. We're at the very end of the shell. And the next one's a single stitch. And then we have a decrease. And a single stitch. And at this point, we can just take the C clip out once we get to the C clip. We can just go ahead and take it out. And then we're just going to decrease until closed. So we're just going to do decreases until we can't decrease anymore. I think we're only going to have like one more decrease, yeah. So this next next decrease is going to be our last one, so we're going to pick it up like we're doing a decrease. We're going to go ahead and pull the band through everything on our hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And now we're just going to tuck our tail in. And when we're tucking our tail in, we're going to want to pull it in, but we're not going to like want to pull it in super hard, if that makes sense. We kind of want to leave it so the end of the shell looks a little bit pointy. So when we pull it in, I'm sorry, my camera's moving again. Um, but when we pull it in, you're just going to want to pull it in just enough to hide the tail. And then you're going to kind of pinch it so it stays pointy. But first we're going to finish hiding this tail. Like that. And then you can kind of see I'm kind of just pinching the end here. Squishing it like this. And then we will have our shell. For our hermit crab. I feel like this shell bit looks so weird without the hermit crab attached to it, so we'll get started on that. I don't know why my camera's moving so much. Oh my god, hold up. Sorry. Technical difficulties. There, that should be better. So that is it for the main shell part. Now what we're going to do next is we are going to make this little, like, flap <laughs> that goes around the crab body. And then we will make the crab. So I'm going to pick up bands again. We're still going to be using our shell color. You know that end bit felt, felt like it went so fast, but I don't know if it, like I was going fast or it gets tiny. I've said this a bunch of times whenever I have designs that get small at the end. I'm like, okay, was I going fast or was it just that we had less things to do? I don't know. I don't know. Almost done. Okay. So, I'm drinking water again. Don't mind me. Anyways. 
So for the next part, like I said, we're gonna make the, like a, I don't know, like just like a hole to put the crab in, kind of, sort of, on the shell. So just like this bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch ten times in the circle on like the front of your shell. So just look at your shell and decide what piece you want the front to be. Mm, I think I'm gonna go right here. And we're just gonna stitch ten times in a circle. And you can start wherever you want. Uh, I think I'm gonna start right, right here. And we're just gonna stitch ten times in a circle. That's one, two, three, four. And I'm kind of just feeling for how a circle would look. I'm not being too exact with it. Uh, how many stitches are we at? And if you ever lose how many stitches you're at, you can always start by cutting the one on your hook and then go backwards. So we can start by going one, two, three, four, five, six. And I know I have six stitches right now, so I want to do four more. So I kind of want to space them out appropriately so we end up back here. Mm, go right here. So this is seven. Eight. Nine. <laughs> And then I think 10. Uh, no. Yeah. And so I'm going to count backwards to make sure I have 10 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Once you've made sure you have 10, you're going to go back into that first loop. And like I said, you're aiming to make a circle. So you want to end up back at the start here. You're going to go back through that first loop. Make a stitch. And we're going to go ahead and put a C clip on this one. And I'm going to pick up some mads really quick. And then I'll tell you what we're doing next. Okay. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to increase 5 on the top. Now this part's tricky because depending on where you started your circle, the top of your crab is going to be different. But basically, like for me, I would probably do my 5 stitches right here because I want this to be... Well, actually... Okay, so you're going to pretty much just decide what you want the top of your shell to be. And then you're going to do 5 increases in a row. So that could be here, that could be here. I think for me this is going to be the top of my shell, so I'm going to go ahead and do like five increases in a row here. So this first one for me would be an increase, this one, this one, and well, so it's one, two, three, four, five. So those five stitches for me would be an increase, like five increases in a row. And then whatever you want to be the bottom of your shell, you're just going to do five single stitches. And like I said, depending on where you ended up with your circle, the top is going to be different for you. So like. Just look at your shell and decide what the top is, and then just do five increases, in, five increases in a row there. So for me, the next five stitches are increases, because that's where the top of my shell is. But that's where I'm deciding the top of my shell is. And this is just an extra little detail that makes it look nicer. So we're just going to go ahead and do our five increases in a row on the top of our shell. Like that. And then the ones that aren't increases, because we do 10, there should be like 5 single stitches left. So for me, we have 5 single stitches. And then that'll be it for this row. We're almost there and I already ran out of pants. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. And then once you get to the one with the C-clip on it, you're just going to pull a band through this one. You're just going to pull a band through everything and then tie it off. We can take our C-clip out now. We'll go ahead and tuck this tail in. And then that is it for the front part of the shell. Like that. So now we have this hole that we're going to stick our crab into. And one important thing to remember here is remember where you increased. So I know that this is the top of my shell. I just have to show you guys because on this guy I accidentally put the crab in backwards. So <laughs> technically the increases are down here and he looks kind of funny because of that. That was my bad. I just did, I forgot which side I did the increases on and then my crab is technically in his shell upside down. It's not super noticeable if you do that but it bugs me so. Just be aware of where the top of your shell is when we do the attaching and I'll remind you again. But yeah. So now we're going to want to get our crab color. So let's do that. Okay, so I took a quick break. Of course it was like a second for you guys, not even a second. But um, we're going to go ahead and do the crab. Um, so we're going to start again by stitching a circle. But we're going to do a circle of 8 stitches on the inside here. And kind of again, it doesn't really matter where you start actually for this crab. Kind of doesn't really matter where you start at all, but you do want to just pick somewhere inside this thing we created. And we're going to stitch around eight times. So I'm going to go right here. And once again, I'm just going to stick stitch around eight times in a circle. So that's one, two, three. Four, I don't know if my camera's focused. <laughs> okay, I guess this is five. I feel like I need one here though. Five. <laughs> It's always so hard. It's like, where should be six? I don't know. This will be six. Six. Seven. And then I guess this one will be eight. So now we're going to want to count around to make sure we have eight stitches in the circle. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once you've made sure you have eight, you're going to go in through this first loop here. And you're going to make a stitch. It's also, you have to be careful not to snag the outside. I keep nearly snagging the outside loops. But you'll make a stitch, and then this one will be the one we put our C-clip on. Like that. So that was the starting bit. Um, now we're going to go ahead and do two rows normal. So we're just going to do two rows of single stitches around this little thing we made. So we're going to go ahead and just do two rows normal. Two rows of single stitches. I'm really trying so hard to keep my hands away so you can see, but this part is just so weird. And you really do have to be so careful not to snag the bands on the outside. But I don't think it's too bad. It's definitely worth it. And once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch and move it up. So that was one row. Like I said, we're doing two rows, so we need to do one more. Pick up a few more bands. Oh my god, I keep snagging that band. Stop. 
So just make sure you're not snagging any of the bands from the outside. We don't want this outer piece to be like attached to the inner piece in any way. So just make sure you're not snagging anything. And then once again, once we get to the C-clip, we'll make a stitch. And we'll move it up. So after those two rows, we should still be at eight loops, so we can count to make sure. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like that. So now we're going to want to add a tiny bit of stuffing in here. Just, just helps. So just stuff your crab a little bit. Like that, you just want to add a little bit of stuffing. And now once again, we're going to be decreasing every other. So once again, we're going to decrease every other stitch till close. No, not till close, sorry, brain, gone. Um, we're going to be decreasing every other this row, so we'll just alternate between doing a single stitch until... Single stitch and a decrease. I can speak, sort of. <laughs> but this one's our single stitch, so the next one will go ahead and be a decrease. Then we do a single stitch. Hmm, my lighting was far off. I think my light moved. So, single stitch. I'm also sorry. Hmm. Lighting adjustments happening. Um. Okay, so the next one's a decrease. Then we have a single stitch. And then a decrease is going to land on the one we have a C-clip on. We're going to go ahead and do it. And at this point, we're going to take our C-clip out, and we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be, be a decrease until we can't decrease anymore. And I actually think that this ne next decrease is going to go is going to be my last, so I'm going to pick it up. And then once I have the decrease up on my hook, I'm going to pull a band through everything on my hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then we'll just hide our tail in. We're just gonna pull it into the to the crab here. And then after that we can just squish it a little bit. I find squishing it a little bit helps. That. So this kind of looks really odd until we add the legs and the eyes. And then once you add the eyes it comes together. So we're going to go ahead and do all that now. We're going to do the arms, the legs, the eyes. Um, I, for some reason, the, the, the photo I was copying the hermit crab from, he had black toes, and I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to make his toes a darker color. You don't have to do that at all. I don't know. I just did it because the photo I was following when I was looking at a hermit crab had it, so I did it. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to use my purple color for his, like toe color, I guess. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to make everything first and then we'll attach it is how we'll do this. I'm trying to figure it out, honestly. I don't know what the most effective way is going to be. I think I'll show you how to make all the legs first and then we'll attach everything. That's probably going to be the way to go. So we're going to start with this first back leg here and then we'll do, we'll move up to the arms. So we'll do the legs first. So, I forgot how to do the legs, so let me ch double check. Okay, I double checked how we made all the legs. So, I've made one of each. Um, after I show you how to make it, you're probably going to want to pause the video, go make another one, then come back and make the next thing. But we're going to need to make an eye, a shorter leg, a bigger leg, and then a claw. And I'll show you how to do all of them. And like I already mentioned, I know I already mentioned this, but you don't have to put the little, like, darker color on the end. It was just kind of like a personal choice for me. I I liked how it looked, so I'm keeping it. But you don't have to do that. You can make the leg all one color if you wish. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make the smallest leg, and then I think we'll move up to the more complicated one. So I'll show you how to make this leg. We'll move, do that leg and then the claw. And I'll show you how to do the eye last. So I'm going to show you how to make the smallest leg first. And then we'll attach everything. So to make the smallest leg, we are going to start by wrapping a band 
four times around our hook. So one, two, and then we're gonna grab both these loops, wrap them around again. So it's four. And now we're gonna chain up three um, doubled bands. So we're gonna get a band. We're gonna double it. And then we're gonna slide the cap band onto that band. Oh my god, this is gonna be so hard to do on camera. Doubled bands are so weird. We're gonna slide that doubled band, the not the double band, the cap band onto the doubled band. And now we're gonna chain up two more times. So we're gonna chain up two doubled bands. So we have three total, so two. Because that first one was one, so this one's two. And then three. Like that. And now we're gonna get two bands. We're gonna double them. And this one's always so hard to do because it's so tight. Slide them on, put both ends back on our hook. We're gonna take a blue band and we're just gonna slide this onto it. And that is how you make the smallest of the legs. So like I said, you need two of these. I already made the other one, so I'm gonna show you how to do the next leg. But if you haven't done it, you're gonna to wanna to pause right now and make that leg. And this leg is very similar to how we made the last leg. There's just like one extra doubled band, doubled, um, like doubled, what are they called? Like a double, is it a double doubled band on the end? I don't know. I'll show you though. So we're good. Ah, dropping bands. Anyways. Oh, come on, the battery light's flashing. Hold up. Okay, battery has been flipped out once again. <laughs> so we'll get started on the other leg. I hope this battery lasts until the end of the tutorial. It should, because we're almost done, but... Yeah, next tutorial I need to remember to charge all my batteries. Usually I'm pretty good about it, but... It's been a crazy week, because I literally barely came home from school like four days ago, so... It's been a crazy time. My camera would focus, thank you. So we're going to start again by wrapping a band four times around our hook, so we'll wrap it twice. Wrap both those loops and wrap it around again, so we have four times. And once again, we're going to chain up three doubled bands. So we're going to get a band, double it, slide this cat band onto that, both ends back on our hook. We'll do that exact same thing two more times, so we have three chains total. That's two. Three. And now we're going to want to chain up two doubled, doubled bands. So we're going to take two bands, double them, slide this on, both ends back on our hook. Do that one more time. So take two bands, double them, slide this onto that. And then we're going to go ahead and take our last, um, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, we're gonna take a band and we're just gonna slide this whole leg onto that band. And hopefully not snag anything, but I just snagged everything. <laughs> Lovely. There we go. And we'll just slide the leg onto a band. And then that'll be our second, like, bigger leg, is how I like to think about it. So the very last thing we have to make is our claw. And this one's actually pretty easy to make. I, I hate making that one big leg because it has so many double doubled bands. Double double bands, I don't like them that much. But sometimes they're necessary. I'm picking up bands again, in case you needed to know. Which you probably didn't. <laughs> Anyways. So, once again we're going to start a bit. Start by wrapping a band four times around our hook. So one, two, and then three, four. And now we're gonna take a band. We're gonna double it. And we're gonna slide the cat band onto that band. Both ends back on our hook. Now we're gonna take two bands double them. We're going to slide this onto the doubled bands. 
And now we're going to kind of just set this aside for a second. So we're just going to leave it on our hook. It's just going to chill there. And we're going to start the other part of the claw. So once again, we're going to take a band. We're going to wrap it four times around our hook. And now we're going to chain up two doubled bands. So this will be one. I always find sliding the cat band on the hardest part. And then we'll chain up another one. And once again, we're going to take two bands, double them, and then we're going to put, slide this on, and then put both ends back on our hook. Now we can kind of scoot these both to the front of our hook. So you should have a little piece, and then a slightly longer piece. And now we're just going to chain up four singled bands, um, but first we're going to take a band, double it, and this is technically one of the ones we're chaining. Anyways, I won't confuse you. Um, we're going to take a band, double it, we're going to slide both of these onto that band. Put both ends back on our hook. And then we're going to just chain up three doubled bands. This is one, two, and that band just broke, so this one's three. And now we're just going to take a band, slide it through everything on our hook, and then we can set it aside. So like I said, you want to make two of all of these, so you have two claws, two longer legs, two shorter legs, I think those are the shorter ones, these are the longer ones. And the very last thing we need to make is the eyes. So, there's a couple different ways you can do the eyes. Um, these are 4 millimeter pony beads. But like I mentioned at the start of the tutorial, I realized today I left these pony beads back in my apartment. And we're going to have to make it work with something else. I'm going to actually be using bands today for my eyes because I think that the bead I have is way too big. So I'm going to go ahead and use bands today. But I'm going to show you how to do it with a bead. So... I think most people's hooks can fit through a pony bead. This is a 6mm pony bead. But I was able to fit my hook, and I don't know if this is because my hook is really thin. So if it wasn't really thin, you could use like a piece of floss to get it onto the band. But my hook fit through the eye. And if your hook fits through the eye, this is like the easiest way to do it. So just shove your hook through the pony bead, like I have here. Then you're going to take a band, double it, and you'll pretty much use the bead as the cat band. So you'll slide it on, both ends back on your hook, and then you'll just chain up two more times. And then that would be your eye. Actually, this doesn't look that bad. No, it kind of looks, it kind of looks a little big, but that's just because I'm picky. You could totally use... You know what, maybe we'll use one in one today. <laughs> I don't know. That actually doesn't look as bad as I thought it was gonna. Um, but yeah, this would be your eye, so you would just take a band, pull it through, and then this would be your eye. So you could do it that way. You could do it the other way if you don't have pony beads, which I'll show you now. So if you don't have pony beads, you would just take two bands, Wrap them around your hook four times. And then once again, you do the same thing and chain up three doubled bands. Oh my god. I always hate sliding the cat band onto the doubled bands because I sometimes lose it. Like I did just now. So you try two of sliding it on. Please don't. There we go. Like that. And we'll chain up the other two. And then this would also work as an eye. So you can do it either way. Um, I personally like the beads better, but I'm going to do bands today because I left my beads at home. Or maybe we'll just use the really big eyes. I don't know what I'm doing yet. But it is time to... 
attach all this to our crab. So I find the best way to start is to, one, you're going to want to find the top of your crab. That's the mistake I made on this guy, I didn't notice and I put everything on upside down. So I can see the increases are right here, so this is the top of my crab. And I think it's easiest to attach the eyes first, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I think we're going to go ahead and use one bead and then one band eye, because why the heck not? And I think it looks cutest if you put the eyes really close together, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But you're just going to use this band we left out to tie it in. And I would recommend not tucking any of your tails in until you're happy with it where everything is placed. But you're just going to use the bands at the bottom of these to tie everything in. Like that. Okay, that looks hilarious. <laughs> these big eyes are so weird. I definitely like the smaller ones better. But for today, it's going to have to work. So after I do the eyes, I usually go ahead and tie in the legs next. The biggest legs. So like the big back legs. We're gonna find want to find which ones those are and we're gonna tie those in next and I usually just come like far back here and I'll tie them in on the side you don't want them to put them you don't want to put them too low either and once again we just use the band to tie it on ah no oh. come back Dang it. I lost the band. Okay, we're good. Oh my god, I lost it again. So we'll just pull it tight. And actually on the legs, you do want to hide the tails. So just go ahead and hide the tail. And it is kind of a pain to hide the tails into such a small crab bit, but it's not the worst thing. And it's not too hard to hide the tails in. I ha It hasn't been like such a big of a nuisance. I felt like I had to fix the design or anything, so... While it's a little annoying, it's not horrible. And at this point, the legs are going to look really weird. And the trick is, you want to go into some of the bands right here and like on the tops of them. You want to go through like the middle of this guy. And then pull on it a little bit. So you want to like angle the leg downward a little bit give it that crabby look do the same thing on the other side so we'll put the leg right here and with these back legs they're pretty far back they're pretty much like almost in the shell is where I place them oh my god I keep dropping my bands so we'll tie them in. And once again, we'll hide the tail. And then we'll pull on some of these. We'll stick our hook through the middle and then pull on some of these so that way the leg angles downward a bit. And then we'll do the next set of legs, so I usually do the smaller legs next. And I'll just put these like right in front of where the other leg was. Hmm, that might be a little too far forward. Um, where should I tie you? Figuring out where to tie these guys is such a problem because there isn't much space, but you kind of just have to make it work. Tie them wherever it feels appropriate. Then we tuck the tail in, and this is the same as the other leg. You'll tuck the tail in and then you'll pull on the a few of these bands a little bit just to get the leg to curve a bit. Like that. It's got two legs on this side, let's put another leg on this side. So this is pretty much all we're doing. This is why I said it might be a little difficult for beginners because I know attaching things can be such a pain. But it was kind of like unavoidable for this design. I always try to not have too much attaching in my designs because I know it's hard. But it's 
kind of inevitable with this guy, so just happened. Okay. So far, so good on the legs. <laughs> I kind of don't like the eyes. That's why I'm not tucking the eye tails in, because I totally want to remove the eyes later. I'm not liking his eyeballs right now. They're too big. Okay, but once you have those legs in and you've kind of pulled on them so they're like angled properly. We're going to go ahead and put the claws in and the claws are definitely the easiest. Um, I usually just kind of set them where I want them and then look for where I can attach them to. So we'll attach these to right here. Like that. And you can once again pull on these so it's a little angled downward. And you could also pull on parts of the claw so it's rounded as well. See? Just to fix it a little bit. Just helps the claw look a little more claw like. And I'll put the other arm right here. And then I'm just going to tuck all my tails in real quick. I have such a hard time tucking the tails in on camera. Like, I'm always so sorry I never do it on camera, but I just... I have such a hard time tucking the tails in on camera, and I don't know why. I've been doing tutorials for, like, what, five years now? Still can't do it. It's just so hard to see what I'm doing. And the tails are such a pain. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this crab. I'm actually surprised the attaching on this guy came out so well. Every time I attach in tutorials, if you guys have seen some of my other tutorials, things get a little wonky. So this guy, for attaching him on camera, he's looking pretty good. I think he just looks a little off because of the eyes. Maybe I should have only done one band for this eye. I'm not a fan of the eyes right now, but that's just probably me being harsh on this crab. But otherwise, I think he's done. I hope your crab turned out okay. I know the attaching at the end can be a little difficult, but it's honestly just trial and error, so if you don't like where a leg is, you can always move it. Um, things like that. But I think that is it for this tutorial. If you make a hermit crab, definitely show it to me on Instagram. I would love to see how yours turn out. Also, because of how mine looks, I'm like, oh, did I show you guys how to do it right? But I did. It's just that these eyes are, like, killing the vibe. Um... But yeah, subscribe if you want to see t t more tutorials from me. I have more things coming. These are not things coming to the channel, but I did recently make a double ice cream scoop design that I'm not sure if I want to release yet. Um, I'm still working on that whale shark. I went and grabbed him so I could show you guys. This whale shark is just still not what I want yet, so... Designs are in the process. Things are happening, but there will be more tutorials soon. Um, check out my Instagram if you want to see what I'm up to on there. I post a lot of what I'm doing daily, so if I ever disappear from this channel, you can see why I'm gone, um, especially because school is coming back soon and sometimes stuff happens with school. And I usually post updates on there, so if you want to keep up with me, Instagram's the best place to do so. It's also a good place to see what designs are coming. If you want to know what's coming next, I usually let everyone know what tutorials are coming before YouTube. I don't know, it's just a better system. Um, and uh, yeah, so like I said, I hope your crap turned out okay. Don't forget to show your crap to me if you make one. I always love seeing you guys make my stuff. Um, I have been busy in school and I haven't liked as much as I should have, but I do always get the notifications when you guys make my things and it does make me happy, so I would love to see how your things turned out. But, um, I think that's it for this tutorial. Um, I'll see you soon in another one. Bye.